Hi everyone, um, hope Immunity Fest is going well for you. Just a couple of uh, admin pieces. I understand that right now the last three remaining beautiful odd bogs have, uh, have gone live on the auction. So that's the uh, mini sugar snap, the poser and the super fine. Um, at the moment, uh, we're here with Paul Long who founded and uh, runs and owns Anion Clothing. Um, a brand that, that's become really familiar to all of us here uh, at Fluvog and I'm sure a ton of you out there, uh, given the speed that our last collaboration uh, flew out the door at. Um, at. Um, so welcome, Paul. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I think it's probably fair to say that um, I might have owned one of the earliest uh, editions of, of, a, of a, what would you say, kind of an iconic Anion shirt is that fair to say yeah i think you got one of the one of the first batches of Anion when we were still out of a sea can in the far yeah. far yeah. fringes of victoria there yeah yeah well said it was actually back then it was really <laughs> hard i had to exchange the size it was a gift so i can thank my mother-in-law for that journey and this journey and all the journeys that i've been involved in um with Anion. but uh but i remember that location and is it fair to say that it was kind of tricky to get you at um, opening hours in that location? Yeah, there was, uh, it was, it was a shed on the wrong side of town with no electricity. So it's, <laughs> it was sort of a text this number and hope we answer and we'll try to show up on time to do the exchange. Yeah, I remember that I caught you guys on a Wednesday between, uh, between 1 and one forty-two. That was maybe Wednesday's yeah. opening hours. <laughs> And I was fortunate enough to get the right size for me. Um, yeah, it was loose long, hours. How long? How long would it go? Would that have been? That would have been around 2013, 2014. Yeah, I think around Amazing. that time. So, yeah, at that time we were using Canadian wool. Um, when we started Annie, and I really wanted to have an understanding of our whole supply chain. So we were working with sort of the last of the Canadian mills. Um, yeah, so that's sort of where you found us in our journey at Annie and at that point. And we've, we've evolved and definitely changed since then. So. Yeah, so um, maybe you could walk us through like, like where you started and how that, how that evolved. Um, and I mean, it's pretty hard to tell that story and not focus on um, those kind of pillars that you guys are the, the purposes that you guys are focused on with this brand that's that's obviously beyond uh, shirts and hats and, and sweaters and things like that. Yeah, so even from the very beginning, we just wanted to have a understanding of, of where our clothing is made, who makes our clothing, and sort of all aspects of it. So that's where when we started out, we wanted to use Canadian uh, woven textiles because we had a better understanding of their sort of whole process, whether it was the workers, how they're being treated, or just sort of the general um, understanding of the process. So as the Canadian woolen mills sort of ended up closing um, around that 2013, 2014, 2015 mark, uh, there weren't, there wasn't any supply chain for us left in Canada. So around that time, I started hearing rumors and whispers that we could actually use recycled textiles. So the shirt that you bought from us inspired us to sort of go down that rabbit hole, I guess you could say, of how do you recycle textiles? It sounds fairly simple, but the more you dig into it, the more difficult it becomes. So all of the wovens that you see today don't have any dyes in them. But when we started, we, we definitely did have some dyes. So it took us, you know, you bought your shirt in 2014-ish, and it probably took us about five or six. I'd say a good five years to sort of solidify the textile recycling process that we are now wow. so well known for. Wow. Um, and the whole thing actually started out with a bunch of Blackberry messaging. So it's, <laughs> it's funny what is, that that's a throwback now. Yeah. Um, it was like a Blackberry to Blackberry. It was like the, per, wow. you know, it was like the, the private messaging system on Blackberries. So yeah, a woman in Italy had the BlackBerry. I had mine over here. So we sort of just started chatting and 
it's evolved since then. And, you know, at the beginning, we were only able to do the wool shirts that you originally found us for. But since then, we've been able to develop dress shirts, wool shirts, the cotton shirt that you're wearing now. And we've also been able to, you know, develop the whole line of colorways and all that 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 goes along with. And the whole process, we're still not using any dyes. So wow, it's kind of an interesting process. There's an image on the screen right now that very briefly, you know, I can break down. So all of our textiles that we use are post-consumer waste. So this means that when we throw away our clothing and when that sort of clothing story ends, it normally ends up in a landfill. Mm -hmm. So where that garment story ends, our story begins. So we work with people called pickers and right. rag houses, and we actually take our post-consumer waste textiles back out of the landfills themselves. And okay. then we sort them by colors. And then <clears throat> if you look in the image, you can see sort of the first one is a giant washing machine. So yeah. we wash all the textiles. Then the next one, we shred them all up. And okay. then, and you just turn them into essentially like think of it as insulation. So that's, oh yeah, you know, and then in the set, in the third image there, you can sort of see the different tones and the shirt that I'm wearing is actually made from those two tones mixed together. So we take the, shredded insulation material and we recard yeah. it which is sort of a process of creating a dreadlock matting the hairs together and then pulling them and twisting them until they're a usable yarn which is the fourth photo there so once we have our recarded yarns then we just go back to a traditional weaving process um you know and we can use the normal i guess industry standard to an extent of weaving and then the final one there is us doing the inspections because when we're using post-consumer waste, it's never perfect, mm -hmm. you know, but we do our, we do our best to, to get the best results we can. And, you know, every season is unique because we don't dye the textiles. So yeah, that's it, amazing. you know, what we pull out of the landfill of post-consumer waste really is the determining factor to what we end up with on the other end. Yeah. So it's kind of a, it's an interesting process and it's taken us a long time to work out the kinks, I guess you could say, but now we're at a space where we're comfortable doing it. And, you know, the collab that we did with you guys last year, we were able to do some pretty crazy colors that you can see in your shirt now. Yeah. I don't know how you, like, is that, is that color matching and that process difficult? Like if you, how, how, how much trial and error is there? And, and once you do, then how do you manage to, make it at a scale that you can that you can keep consistent <laughs> That's yeah nerve. um it's inspiring but it's also saddening the amount of textile waste that is out there for us to use oh, um, I yeah yeah i i had a call with our rag house this morning and the facility that we just moved into with them uh it's about the size of a american football field and it's just filled with sorting and textile waste that we yeah go through. So we were looking at all of our colors for next year and sort of weighing out the tonnage of blues or reds or blacks. And, you know, we don't get to pick a specific Pantone color. Right. We really have to go with a more, I don't know if you want to call it like a feel or a vibe yeah. of that, of that tone. Yeah. So that's what we were doing this morning. So, I mean, it's, it's inspiring because we're actively removing that from landfills and we're repurposing and we're, we're giving it back a life. Um, but it's also a little bit depressing to see the mass, the mass yeah. textiles. But I think, you know, overall we can create those colors because unfortunately there still is quite a lot of textile waste out there. Um, and, and then um, I know that the last, the last few years have, have really increased for you in terms of business. I mean, does it also kind of fill you with excitement that you can take more and more as business grows, you can take, take more of those pieces out and give them a new life? Yeah, I mean, our goal, Annie, and I guess at the end of the day is sort of to educate people in, you know, clothing doesn't have to be a one way road for us. That's how we sort of see it, you know. Um, and if we can start circularizing even small aspects of our industry, uh, the impacts can be massive. So yeah. for us, it's so inspiring to see every single year, you know, we're coming out with new products, new colors, new styles. And it's, it's pretty cool to hear the different people's stories and, you know, the impacts and sort of just the eye-opening, I guess, eureka moments 
that people have, you know, when they, when they get that product and there's like, this is so yeah, totally. cool, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's what really gets me excited. And it's competitively priced to what else is out there in terms of, of uh, the quality level. Right. I mean, that's how, how much, how much waste do you think that there, there is ballpark um, given the fact that there are imperfections like from the, from your side of things. So when we see the imperfections, we, I try to roll with them. Yeah. Um, in the sense that if you get a shirt that has like a weird imperfection in, in it, you know, we sort of take that opportunity to talk to the customer and be like, you know what, you, you truly did get the one of a kind shirt of the one of a yeah. kind. Yeah. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, I, you know, if we get, you know, 5% of those shirts of a total run for a season, we'll put them at the back of the store sometimes, but most often the customer is really sort of excited, I guess, once you explain why there's that imperfection, because it's again, another eureka yeah. moment where they're like, I can't believe that this came from like a textile landfill, you know, yeah. that's, and, and you wouldn't notice it. Like the shirt that you're wearing, you would never think that that is out of post consumer waste textiles. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's sort of our gold standard, you know, like we don't yeah. want you to look around and think like, Hey, this is all out of like, you know, post consumer waste textiles. We want you to be like, this is a gorgeous product, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's totally. also out of post-consumer, you know? And that's, that's the cool part. Are you, would you say that you are transitioning most of the things in your product range to using that post-consumer material? If you are using yeah. the fibers now? Yeah. Um, I sort of drew a line in the sand uh, just before COVID hit. So it, it was a bit of a struggle to get through that, but we, we decided at that point that we weren't going to develop any new products unless they were out of post-consumer waste textiles. So it's, it's limited on what right. we can create because I do need to create new supply chains and the yarns for like a t-shirt or a sweater or a woven are all different and they're all processed differently. Yeah. So, you know, we're the ones that are pushing the different looms and mills and weavers, uh, you know, to really investigate, I guess, in the intellectual property that's needed to start using a post-consumer waste supply chain. So, yeah. and most of the, you know, most of the sewers and the suppliers that we work with, everybody's on board, you know? I think we all see this as a bit of a, a tangible and actionable thing that we're all doing rather than, you know, just sort of, I guess, thinking about stuff. Yeah, yeah. The, um, um, Oh, I just, I just blanked for a second there. Shirts, things. Um, so, so as business grows, I mean, be as specific or general as you'd like, but in terms of production, can you walk us through, like you said that there are these, um, uh, rag something, I can't remember the term. Yeah. Rag houses. Yeah. And so, um, again, general or specific, like where does it go? And then until it gets to your shop. Yeah, so it, it sort of starts out with the customer and different, uh, the easiest thing to call them essentially is a donation center. So sometimes when you donate things, uh, you know, maybe the pant leg is missing, maybe the suit jacket has a hole in it, or maybe it just isn't in style right now. Mm -hmm. So if the donation center can't sell it, they don't want to keep it on the floor. Mm -hmm. So they'll ship it to another donation center and that story just sort of continues to go around and around and around. At a certain point, you just end up with all of these goods or clothing garments that just nobody wants to buy. So then they end up getting improperly disposed of a lot of the time, which is unfortunate. Um, but that's where our story begins. So that's where yeah. we start working with pickers and rag houses to go to these locations where like just all of this textile waste is just, you know, getting thrown out. And we start saying, okay, well, I want some dark gray shirts for next year. I want some greens or, you know, I want some bright reds or something. And we start amassing massive amounts of textile waste, like sort of, you know, the sea cans that you ship stuff around the world in. Yeah. So we'll fill multiples of those up with. So we, you wow. know, we'll send three or four of those just with say sweaters. And those and are those no, so this happens over in Asia because that's typically yeah. where our textile waste ends up. Um, okay. 
you know, a dream of mine would be for us to be able to do this where we actually consume our textiles as well, which is typical, like sort of Europe or North America. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a, that's a pretty big fish idea. And I hope one yeah. day we, we get a play in that court. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so right now we're sourcing the majority of our textile waste from Asia. And then we ship it over to Europe where we have the facilities to do that shredding process that I was talking to you about. Yeah. And <clears throat> this is sort of the intellectual property of how do you take, you know, something that has zero value and has been deemed garbage and turn it into a beautiful usable yarn that people yeah. will value and, you know, want to purchase. So that's where a lot of the magic happens. And we work with both the pickers and the, you know, the looms and the weavers and the shredders and everybody and the processors over in Europe to really decide the next season's colors. So right now I'm working on next year's stuff and, you know, when I wanted, you know, maybe a baby blue. And they're like, well, yeah. we don't have baby blue. We have like a dark navy or we have this. So it's, it's very much upstream design work rather than this is exactly what I want. I need it this Pantone. We have to be very right. lenient in what we can create. Yeah. And then once we create the woven goods there in Europe, we're able to ship them over to our factory in Vancouver. Um, that's just a couple, I guess more than a couple, but you know, a couple blocks from you guys. And yeah. that's where we have all of our sewers. So that's where we manufacture all of our clothing is in downtown Vancouver there. So, awesome. Yeah. Which is also now close to you guys, given that you've now opened a new store in Vancouver and Kits, which is exciting. Yeah. So our first store is over in Vic. And now we just recently opened one in Kits there on West 4th uh, about a month ago. So we're pretty stoked about that, making the jump to the lower mainland there. I love, I love how you said Vic, I said Kits as though everybody watching is based in BC. So this is a yeah. store, in, in the, the original store was in Victoria on Vancouver Island in Canada. And the second store now is open in Vancouver, uh, the same city that we're in uh, here in Fluvog. Um, but I, I know for a fact, because we've talked about this, you are shipping to very distant lands uh, on a regular basis right yes. now. And you can barely keep anything in stock, which is very exciting. It just goes to show that you know the the style side of it was great but i you know that that approach to um what's i guess stewardship is is so valuable where you you don't produce any lesser of a um uh of a product it's just it just comes in it comes in a better way like it comes to the end user in a, in a better way so yeah we've, we've, been, we've been thrilled to to be able to work with you guys um this um just, just in case anybody didn't know, we did a collab with Paul and Anyan last fall, actually about a year ago, and we produced this shirt and a hat, uh, and then we did um, some of these official shoes, and, and we just launched the official line at that time, so this was one of the first officials, and um, we sold out of all of them uh, very quickly, and, and I know for a fact, I actually know personally a few people who bought the, the entire set. So I've seen, I don't yeah. know if you've seen it, but there's, there's some great pictures of people head to toe in this, uh, in this Anion plaid. Yeah. Did, did, you, did, you get, yeah. did you get a piece of everything? Uh, I have one of the hats and one of the shirts. I actually have yeah. my shirt here with me, but um, I figured we didn't have to be too matchy matchy. It but, wouldn't be the um, first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was pretty stoked actually in both the victoria store and the vancouver store when you go in there we we shadow boxed a pair of shoes um, yeah i've grown up knowing about flu vog i've owned some vogs before we ever sort of teamed up and i just think like it's your shoes already are like pieces of art so when we did a collab i was like i really want to get these framed i want to put yeah. them up in my you know up in the house and i I was stoked that I got to get a pair because yeah, I just think they're so cool. Like it's, it's more of a piece of art for me than a shoe. Yeah. That, that's, uh, that's how it feels for sure. I think, um, people are probably spotting this purple plaid over my shoulder here. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of comments here. So it's probably time that we let people know that we're doing another collab this fall. Um, the release time will be a, right around the same time of the year. And, uh, as Paul is putting on the new, the new version, um, I'll, uh, let me show you one of these shoes. 
So as you can see from the photograph and Paul's shirt, man, that looks so good. Um, yeah, I'm stoked. <laughs> so this is the this is the new Radio 2 Doug. And so this is a recycled sole. It's uh, veggie tanned leather and then the, the, the Anion material here. And then the, you're not going to be able to see it, I don't think, but the, uh, the, the collab logos in the, in the foot sock. Um, I also happen to be wearing a pair. Um, so let me just show you because uh, this is something that we often do here at Fluvog is uh, lift our legs high in the air so people can see what we're wearing. Um, so we've got some, some speed hooks and eyelets there that are, that are kind of give it more of a, um, like a utility feel as well. But this is one of our best selling uh, families. And uh, I don't know, I, I would anticipate these will go even faster than the last one did. Yeah, I was pretty amazed. <clears throat> when you told me like within, I don't know, I think they launched on like a Thursday or Friday and by next week they were gone. I know my mom, she actually went into the store in Calgary, Alberta, and she was there at opening and, you know, Amazing. she had her sizes picked out. She had everything and uh, she ended up getting the wrong size. And by the time she drove home and came back, she had to no. call them because a woman was there trying to buy the other size for her. It was... And uh how did that end? She sorted it all out, but uh, <laughs> it was quite funny. She was like, I can't believe I, you know, I, I almost didn't even get one of these things. Yeah, I know. It was, it was amazing. Yeah. I so mean, one it, thing that's kind of cool um, on, I'm not allowed, I don't know if I'm allowed to show this, but um, the it. shoe that you have isn't the exact same print as this. It's right. actually a little bit of a tighter print yeah. um, that you can see. So last year, I think we just did a unisex shirt. And then this year we're doing sort of a male cut and a female cut. So the yeah. female cut is what we call our painter's coat. And Arabella on your team thought it'd be cool if we mismatched up some of the uh, prints. So yeah. the body of the women's is, you know, like my shirting material, but then yeah. the front placket and the back yeah. yoke are yeah. all the tighter so it kind of gives the shirt like this nice little, I don't know, depth to it. So yeah. you know, when you're a little bit ways back here, you can sort of see the two different patterns there, which, yeah, uh, awesome. which is pretty cool. I think that's the first time I've seen that one. And that's, that is the painter's coat. Is that right? Yeah. So that's what we call the painter's coat. Um, and we're doing a full run for you guys in, in those as well as a full run of these, um, which is kind of cool. We are doing a hat. But um, yeah. I'm not allowed to show that off quite yet because I know it's a bit of a different style this year. Yeah, I, I will tell you that you, people can't hear, but behind the camera here, everybody's clapping about the painter's coat because that is one of your <laughs> best selling new products. It's a slightly longer uh, shirt slash coat with pockets. Um, I know a lot of people who own this, this coat. So um, yeah, so that, that's going to be very exciting. Yeah, there's, uh, there's two hidden hip pockets just sort of in the side. So even if you look on the website for the painter's coat, you won't really see them, but they're just sort of snuck in there on the side. Do you think it's possible um, for my, when I get one of these shirts to put, um, <laughs> you call them secret hidden pockets in there? Can you put them in one of the men's mediums? Is that possible? <laughs> well, yeah, we just won't tell you which one. Oh, no, no, that's not. I can't do that. <laughs> Yeah, you'd have to go um, through them all. Totally. Well, that that is so exciting. I think, um, you know, the best way, we will definitely let the Flamunity know first uh, when these can be expected. They're, they're coming this fall. Um, as soon as we get them, we will release them. Um, and you'll you'll know here on the Flamunity first. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so just, yeah. just like last year, we at Annie and won't be carrying these. Okay. So this is an exclusive flu vog only. Uh, so for, okay. any, for any of you watching, um, we were getting a couple of emails last year of people that yeah. missed out and were bugging us for it. So you do have to go through flu vog. Um, yeah. And so, and yeah. What should, um, if you could just put your um, cell number in the comments. So any other guys that want pockets in their shirts, <laughs> they can text you the details. That'd be great. And that should yeah, be so be perfect. I, I truth honestly, I, I, I wear this shirt all the time. So that's been a year of wearing this shirt. And I, I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to switch over to the new one, but it looks fantastic. 
Um, so I, I just feel like now I'll only have two shirts that I live in, which is better than one, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the cool thing with these is they don't really fade. So after you've had yours for a year, you probably yeah. notice that the color is pretty much still there. And that's because yeah. all of the washing out of that tone has right. already been done while yeah. it was worn. Yeah. So it's pretty crazy because you get these really vibrant colors. And as so many of us know, you know, the more vibrant colors, they start to fade, they start to go away over time. But since we're using the post-consumer waste, we're not yeah. altering the color. So, you know, it's, it's almost like that sort of it, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm being instructed here to just buy the painter's coat for myself if I want pockets and give you a break, <laughs> like you said, to just lay off Paul. He's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I'll, just, okay, so, I'll just put it onto my list. I don't know if I get to that list though. Yeah, yeah. So once again, this is the shoe that's coming out. Paul's wearing the shirt that's coming out this fall. There's also a hat and a painter's coat with the extra Arabella suggested. What was the, uh, what's this part called again, sorry? Oh, so it's on the front placket, which placket. is where you do your buttons. And then yeah. it's also on the back yoke, which is kind of nice okay. here. Let me see if I can get a shot of it here. So that sort of there it is a go. hole there and then Beautiful. you can sort of see the back there as well oh, come on it's so good so yeah they okay. are phenomenal well thanks so much for your time today paul and uh thanks everyone for watching um it's it's been great to work with you and i know our, our teams here are so inspired by the by the journey of the company and how focused you guys are on the mission and uh, and it's it's definitely something we pay attention to here all the time as well. So, thanks for sharing with us. Um, I think the the URL to your to your store and website where there's way more details about what you guys do is probably in the comments section there. Otherwise, just search Anion. Um, I think there's 30 minutes left of that auction on those beautiful Oddbogs. Um, and just to wrap up, um, the the presale is is available until Sunday. 10% uh, off site-wide on everything uh, until Sunday Pacific time as well. Um, is there anything else I'm missing as he looks off camera? No, that looks good. Okay, well, happy Flumunity Fest, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks. Yeah.